So the Muslim community has set its expectations for federal politicians on what's needed to fight Islamophobia and anti-Muslim hate in this country. Let's bring in three members of parliament to respond to those calls to action. Ikra Khalid is a Mississauga Liberal MP and chair of the Commons Justice Committee. She is also a Muslim member of parliament. Tim Upple is an Edmonton Conservative MP and the caucus party liaison for the official opposition. And Lindsay Matheson is a New Democrat MP from the City of London and her party's critic for diversity, inclusion and youth. Thank you all for uh, taking time to speak with me tonight. I Ikra Khalid, let me start with you. There uh, seems now to be a consensus inside the Muslim community that the first step to action uh, needs Needs to be a national summit on Islamophobia. Do you support that demand and have you had any discussions with the Prime Minister to make that happen? I absolutely support that demand and Peter as you may recall I, in 2017 when I tabled motion 103 the main ask of that motion was to bring in that whole of government approach and I think that a summit uh, would bring in all levels of government in order to really ensure that this conversation that that the calls to action really get to its implementation. Uh, and uh, and I, I look forward to continuing to advocate for this. Okay, Mr. Apple, uh, would your party support the call for a national summit on Islamophobia and, and take part in that summit? Yeah, I mean, I would welcome that, an opportunity to have discussions about how, um, you know, we as, uh, as Canadians, but also parliamentarians, how we could be a part of that solution, how we can help uh, Canadians get to know each other better and, uh, and and learn how Islamophobia has a, has affected the Muslim community. I think that would be a good idea. And what about you, Lindsay Matheson? I'm assuming you're uh, you'll make it unanimous here that we should have a summit. Uh, absolutely. It's something that was clearly stated uh, repeatedly uh, last night at the vigil in London. Um, but I, I did ask the Prime Minister today directly in, in question period, and I did not get that response uh, positively back. So I hope that the members here uh, can bring that forward as well. Ikra Khalid, Muslim community leaders have told us uh, they want to see more resources for police to track online hate and specific hate crimes legislation with more teeth to allow for tougher penalties. Uh, what can we expect from your government? Will your government move forward on those kinds of measures? Um, that's a great question. And I, I have to say, uh, you know, over these past four years, uh, from the uh, the start of the, the Quebec mosque shooting um, through the whole process of having that national conversation about whether Islamophobia is real, to now realizing that Islamophobia is absolutely real in our communities and having to face the, the gruesome deaths of, uh, of four uh, prominent members within the, the London community, I think there absolutely needs to be more to be done. And over the past number of years, I've been consistently saying that this really requires that that all of uh, levels of government approach and a pol the, the police are a okay. huge part of, of that government. Uh, and, then, and that, uh, so uh, that are you satisfied with the pace of, of uh, the action that your government's been taking? I think that we absolutely need to pick up that pace, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we haven't had uh, those difficult conversations. And, and like I said, in 2017, we did have that difficult conversation within our our own House of Commons and uh, and and continue to have those conversations. Mr. Apple, two things the experts suggest uh, can be done as policymakers and legislators, provide more resources to law enforcement agencies to investigate possible cases of, of uh, terrorism, uh, Islamophobia, especially when it involves lone actors, as would appear to be the case in London, and also actually defining ideologically motivated and what, what that means, because it's not in the criminal code and that leaves investigators often uncertain on how to proceed. So would your party support those kinds of changes and, and perhaps making those changes urgently? Yeah, we would support that. I mean, I think it's important that we do have conversations on how we can uh, better support uh, police. We've called on, on uh, the government to do so. We've talked about uh, the cracking down on online hate and bringing forward measures to, um, to, to uh, you know, crack down on, on uh, what's happening on the internet where uh, some people are getting radicalized um, and, and also measures that are already in um, law right now and when we were in government uh, uh, the we changed the criminal code to uh, so that uh, murderers would uh, can receive consecutive sentences for multiple murders and right now the uh, the, sh the, the murderer from the uh, Quebec City mosque shooting um, you know we would like to see him uh, serve consecutive sentences, and I would hope that the liberals would up, up, uh, defend the, the because it's because it's in front of uh, the courts right now that law that they would defend that law and um, make this murder uh, serve multiple sentences, things like that to actually 
let's let's educate uh, Canadians, let's get the police involved, give them the tools that they need, but also strengthen the laws itself. Lindsay Matheson, what's your view on more funding for law enforcement and uh, tougher penalties? Um, more funding is, is absolutely a key part of that, and, and it's something that New Democrats have called upon in um, uh, past platforms uh, as well. Um, and I think a key part of that, too, uh, that uh, Mr. Ubel had discussed was that education piece. That is huge, and the funding for that for organizations to ensure that that uh, piece of education, that outreach that can happen. I know it's something that my community in London has been talking about for a very long time. They've been working uh, in, in interfaith groups to do that, not just the Muslim community, uh, but to do that key amount of outreach. And I think that, that these are also those key points that we need to discuss in a summit that is brought forward, um, whether it's about justice or education or policing, all of it needs to be discussed. Ikra Khalid, uh, you touched on it in 2017. The House passed your motion condemning Islamophobia, but 91 one conservative MPs voted against it then, including uh, the current party leader, Aaron O'Toole, claiming it was a, a threat to free speech. Uh, it, it was a divisive and bitter debate. Um, and I guess I'm wondering how can politicians agree to, to move forward and take tougher measures to counter anti-Muslim hate attacks if they, uh, if they can't all agree to condemn Islamophobia? Um, you know what? It really... Uh it's, it's about uh, understanding the, the needs of Canadians and, and understanding the vulnerabilities that Muslim Canadians are going through. And uh, from 2017 until now, I'm very happy to hear uh, Mr. O'Toole is now recognizing Islamophobia, is using the term Islamophobia uh, regularly in recognizing the, the hate that occurs to, uh, to the Muslim community over these uh, past number of years. And I, I have to say to, to Mr. O'Toole, who mentioned uh, some of the, the actions of the previous government. It, it was the previous government that removed Section 13 from our Human Rights Code, uh, from the Human Rights Act, which would allow for online hate crimes, for example, to have a, um, a, a, you know, a, a system of, uh, of, of victim recognition uh, and, and for justice. I think that those are measures that really do need to be brought back, and I would love the support of, uh, of all parties in the House to, to get that done. Mr. Apple, we're, we're, you know, we could be heading into an election campaign before too long, and we've seen uh, uh, how this issue uh, has been divisive in past election campaigns. What do you think the message uh, is coming from the Muslim community and from the broader Canadian community about what, you know, how, you know, uh, what they want to hear from politicians this time around what they don't want to hear uh, about these kinds of issues involving uh, uh, Islamophobia, perhaps as a divisive issue in an election campaign. I think it's important to recognize that Islamophobia is real. It's, uh, it's negatively, deeply negatively has affected the Muslim community. And uh, I think it's our job to listen. Um, it's not always for us to uh, go out there and, and make these grand uh, statements. It's for us to listen to the Muslim community and, and find out how we can help as, as, uh, as legislators. What can we bring forward to help um, Canadians get to know each other better, have, have that better understanding? And uh, I, I think that, that's important and that's, that's our job here. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Lindsay Matheson, to wrap up our conversation? Um, listening is key and, and using uh, a lot of these divisive tactics uh, clearly isn't working. Uh, and, and it's one of the things that um, I hope to bring to my community and from my community is that voice that we need to do this together, that we stand shoulder to shoulder uh, to fight this kind of, of hate. And the one thing that came out of that vigil last night with those 15,000 people is their focus on love and hope and peace. And so that's what we need to focus on as well. All right. Thank you all for your time tonight. We'll anxiously await next steps uh, on this story. I appreciate you taking the time to talk about it tonight. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.